So, the Sonic movie opened this weekend and has just been tearing it up at the box office, blowing away expectations, both in terms of the quality of the movie, at least among fans, I think. Sure, a lot of critics are hating on it, but that seems to be more of an indication that a movie is actually good these days than anything. And it's also performing better than many, definitely better than I myself expected. Currently, the movie's looking at about a $57 million opening domestically with a $100 million worldwide. And with this being President's Day weekend, don't forget that, it's expected to clear $68 million domestic. But regardless for what happens, this movie has already solidified itself as the highest grossing video game adaptation of all time, beating out even the Detective Pikachu movie. Again, something I totally did not expect, just going off of brand appeal, you know, Pikachu and Pokemon are much bigger than Sonic. But yeah, it's looking to speed past them. Not bad. I've actually seen the movie myself, saw it on Valentine's Day, alone, and I really enjoyed it. So I want to talk about why I believe this thing has been such a hit. Let's actually start with the first reveal trailer that was completely trashed by fans, largely due to the design of Sonic. It looked terrible. He's unrecognizable as the blue blur in that first trailer. So yeah, people were raging on social media, making rants about it, as they do. This is the internet. But the reaction from the team was different than many of these instances we see these days. When you think about major backlash towards a movie, a trailer, uh, recently the one that always comes to mind is the Ghostbusters reboot. Pretty much a universally hated trailer, and how did the people making the movie react by uh, calling the fans uh, racists, sexists, whatever ist they could think of. Uh, similarly, more recently, Birds of Prey, which I'll talk more about. We get all this talk about how the movie is so feminist and it's about fighting misogyny. So if you don't like it, of course, you're racist, sexist, <laughs> you know the deal. I think it was uh, Ewan McGregor in an interview, actually, who said something like, uh, they're combating mansplaining? in the movie, it's just like, wow. That's really gonna put butts in the seats, I bet. So we see very often that there's an attempt to attack and discredit these fans, and surprise, they don't come and see your awful movie as a result. And with the Sonic movie, the people making it could have had a similar reaction. With it being a video game movie, they could have said something like, oh, it's just a bunch of whiny basement-dwelling nerds uh, this movie isn't for you. That's another one we hear a lot, right? When these older franchises get resurrected. Oh, well, this new version isn't for you, older fans. But they didn't do that. That original trailer, again, had just about as much hate as you can get. But in response, the director, Jeff Fowler, came out almost immediately and was like, Guys, we hear you. We want to give you the movie you deserve, and we're going to fix it. The movie was even delayed so we could get this new, far superior design for Sonic. And you could see immediately the perception of the movie change with people, big time. As it wasn't just about the design now being better, of course, yeah, people like that. But fans of the franchise felt respected, you know, they criticized this thing, they didn't like it, and the people making it went out of their way to fix it. It actually turned out to be a pretty amazing marketing move, as now all of us that were screeching about that original design online were now like, oh, well, they did what we wanted them to do, so I guess we gotta see it. And I'm not saying you should always bend to the wills of the people complaining online, as we complain all the time, but you do have to pick your battles, and this was one where it was clearly the smart move to make the character actually look like the Sonic everyone knows. And going beyond that, you had these people working on it that clearly have a passion for the franchise as well. Fowler, like I mentioned, uh, Ben Schwartz, who plays Sonic, you probably know him from Parks and Rec. I saw several interviews with him where he you just could tell he was so genuinely excited about making this movie. I think this is actually a big part of the video game movie successes we're seeing now, like with Detective Pikachu as well, because you now have people making these movies that grew up with these games, these characters, and have an affection for them. You know, you contrast that with, like, back in the day, the, the Super Mario Brothers movie, where most people working on it clearly had no interest in the games. Probably, most of them, I would say, probably never even played the games to begin with. 
And speaking of the actors, having someone like Jim Carrey in your comedy certainly doesn't hurt. I thought all the performances were really good in the movie. Sonic was hilarious, albeit uh, he was a bit much at times. Like, his character is supposed to be hyperactive and annoying, but it can be a bit much. James Marston, Cyclops from the original X-Men movies, was actually a great foil for Sonic, though. But yeah, Jim Carrey just killed it in this movie as Dr. Robotnik. You always have to wonder when someone who's kind of a big actor, at least one that's big for a movie like this, if they're just going to phone it in to get the easy paycheck. But that definitely wasn't the case with Carrey. He totally made the character his own. A lot of his humor, I noticed at least in my theater, landed a bit better with the older audience. Sonic, of course, had stuff that cracked everyone up, but a lot of Robotnik stuff seemed like it was there to keep like the parents engaged who are taking their kids to see the movie, you know, one of those type deals. Carrie took pretty much every scene he was in, just owned it being this super genius, pompous dick. In his mind, everyone's beneath him, but he keeps getting shown up throughout the movie and it's just driving him crazy. So fun to watch. And you can tell he really enjoyed playing the role. I do believe he's already said he's very interested in doing the sequel to the movie. And if you have seen the movie, I'm not going to spoil anything, but... The things they tease at the end of this thing, I myself would definitely like to see a sequel. And while it is a comedy, there are some touching moments with there being this theme of loneliness with Sonic as he's hidden himself from humans this whole time he's been on Earth. He's just been kind of observing them from afar and is just dying for the ability to have some interactions with other people, you know, make friends and stuff like that. It makes him very relatable. The, the kids, I will note, in my theater got legit mad when people were either mean to Sonic or when he got hurt, so they definitely succeeded in making him a lovable character in this movie. So the movie is good as well, that's important. But then there's also competition. There was next to no major competition for this movie this weekend, even though there could have, should have been, I'll say, with Birds of Prey. I've seen all these excuses about why it did bad, not enough marketing, etc. B.S. It had tons of marketing. Uh, I've seen this movie all over the place for months. They had Margot Robbie, currently one of the biggest female actresses around, playing Harley Quinn, one of DC's most popular characters right now, whether it be movies, TV shows, the actual comics. DC is riding their Harley hard right now in just about every form of media. They had all the resources they needed and more to make this thing a success, to have a big opening weekend, but they still managed to drop the ball. Like I said, I definitely don't think there was a lack of advertising. I just think the advertising didn't make the movie look very good. To me, the trailers just reminded me way too much of Suicide Squad, which was obviously its own disaster. The heroes they're introducing, like Black Canary, Huntress, just looked like generic people. Which, speaking of the characters, that's another excuse I hear for this movie. People going, well, no one knows who the Birds of Prey are. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, like, Guardians of the Galaxy was a household name before that movie came out. Give me a break. It wasn't, at least for myself, not that I didn't see advertising, not that I didn't know about the movie, it's just it didn't look appealing to me. So they left the door wide open and Sonic just ran right through them. In fact, you've had these Birds of Prey fans, uh, fanatics really on social media, trying to do damage control for the movie, saying shit like, I went to see Sonic, but it, it had a bunch of you guessed it, racism, sexism, homophobia, which obviously it's it's like a kid's movie. It doesn't have any of that, but you know, it's that classic NPC meme. Seems like it becomes more of a real thing every day. These people just, they don't know how to say anything else. It's seriously like if they tried to have an original thought, their heads would just explode. But whatever, Sonic and Sonic fans went out as a result. So yeah, at the end of the day, I think Sonic's success is actually pretty simple to explain. The Sonic movie respected the fans, which made people want to go see it, and it delivered a quality movie, which then, you know, you get word of mouth in that, people are saying, hey, go check out the Sonic movie, it might surprise you. And I think it's going to end its theatrical run with a really strong number, which then, of course, will probably lead to more sequels. So, the future for The Fastest Thing Alive is definitely bright, and it's well-deserved. Anyway, with that, this video's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on the Sonic movie in the comments. Have you gone and seen it yet? What did you think of the movie? And what do you think about how well it's been performing at the box office? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the Sonic movie. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you want to keep the conversation going, hit me up on Twitter, at Johnny Zakari. Enjoy my Discord, Shy Guy and Friends. Link to both in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.